Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I thought, how about I show you simply the fact that these modern versions teach you to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Make it very simple, nice and easy. Now, I've done this before, but, uh, you know, why not do a refresher, right? So, bear with me. Bear with me. I know it's Titus 3.10. No. Yep. So we're going to go, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way. We're going to go to ESV. ESV says, as for a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him. All right? Just one example. Okay? Uh, let's see if I get this right. See if I get this right here. Alright, so consider that. Now, Luke 12, verse 51. Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay. But rather, division. This is Jesus talking, right? You know this. This is the Lord Jesus Christ in his own words saying, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. Which in itself is... is um, very interesting, in my opinion. Jesus doesn't come to bring peace on earth. He's going to destroy this earth. No, Jesus has come to give peace in the heart. That's where we need peace. Right? He has come to give peace in the human heart. Right? Um, let's go to... Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, goodness sakes, I can't remember. I know it's in John. I can't remember, nothing. 14. John 14, verse 27. Peace. This is Jesus again, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. It's his own words. He says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, this is not contradictory to what we read in Luke 12, right? When Jesus says, think not that I've come to give peace on earth. This is not contradictory to that at all. The peace that Jesus gives us is in the heart, not in the world, right? You understand that, right? I think that's important. I don't know if anybody understands anything. So that's, that's why I talk the way I talk. I want you to understand, right? For these things, Jesus says in John chapter 16, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Right? So, I mean, this is beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. So, in Luke 12, verse 51, when Jesus says, Suppose ye that I am come to, bring, uh, to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Division. 
division and then the ESV it teaches you to reject the Lord Jesus Christ it says as for a person who stirs up division just like the Lord Jesus Christ you gotta warn him you gotta warn him once and then twice warn the Lord Jesus Christ twice after that have nothing more to do with him and it gets worse it gets worse if you go to verse 11 in the ESV I could have done it another way who cares in the ESV for example knowing that such a person as the Lord Jesus Christ is warped and sinful he is self I mean do I really need to go further I mean it's so subtle right you go back to Genesis 3 verse 1 and the serpent was more subtle than any creature that the Lord God had made this is straight from the serpent now if you don't have eyes to see that's on you it's very clear to me that this is very subtle and it's taking a shot at our Lord Jesus Christ it's confusing our children and it's leading people away from the true Word of God it's incredible but of course this is the way it's supposed to happen right we're, we're getting closer and closer to a point to where there's not gonna be anybody on earth that's gonna be saved nobody on earth will be saved that's where we're going toward now for the elect's sake those days will be shortened so before that happens completely the Lord Jesus will come in the clouds of heaven and this world will come to an end but that's what we're leading to and it, it's because of this stuff right here imagine being a young teenager and you're looking at this stuff and saying this doesn't make any sense man well that's that's for good reason the young people are smart so of course they read stuff like this and they're gonna turn away from the scripture and be even more lost than what they were before it's a sad world we live in now what's the King James Bible say Titus 3 verse 10 a man that is an heretic See, that's a lot different. A lot different. A lot different than saying a man that stirs up division. That's a lot different. And there's a heretic. That's one thing. A man that stirs up division, that's a whole nother thing. There's no reason at all to even word it that way unless you got two purposes one to abide by copyright law so you can make money and then two so you can corrupt the Word of God right which I'm gonna end it here I don't need to go on and on and on if you have any questions uh, comments any any thoughts ideas you want to share with me uh, I want to hear them but I'm telling you, right now, watch out, man. Watch out. Watch out for these guys. Oh, why would you read anything but the King James Bible? You ought to know it is the perfect, pure word of God in the English language. There are no mistakes, no errors, no omissions. It is the perfect, pure word of God in the English language. Consider this, and I'll leave it. I'll end it on this. When, this, when the disciples came to the Lord Jesus Christ, they asked him, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? What's the very first thing Jesus says? The very first thing. The very first thing in regards to the end of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ says, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, 
Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many. That's exactly what we see going on in the world today, isn't it?